uh, welcome everyone to this. Welcome everyone to this uh, Town of Orono Planning Board meeting. This is Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. First item on our agenda is a roll call. In person, we have Lisa Buck, we have Mike Costello, myself, Phil Ruck, and online we have Ashley. I'm sorry, Ashley, I haven't worked with you long enough to remember you. Ashley Case, excuse me. And we also have Christian Swinser. And anybody else? No? Maybe we'll have people oh, join. Uh, Dave Thompson. And Dave Thompson is with us online. Looks like he just joined. So, so he should be popping up. Pop up shortly. Yep. Very good. Uh, so next up, it's acceptance of the agenda. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Good. Uh, any discussion? Just real quick, Bill, wanted me to give a reminder for everyone to speak loudly and directly into the owl um, so that everyone remotely can hear. So, yeah. Anybody have any issues with the agenda? All right, Jessica, please. Am I including Ashley in the vote? I don't need to, but it's there's three, four hundred. Yeah. All right. For the approval of the agenda, Ashley Case. Uh, approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Ruck. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approved. Dave Thompson, can you hear us? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you approve the agenda, Dave? Yes, he does. Okay, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Thank that's, you. Uh, that's six four, none opposed. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, next up, approval of the minutes from March 16, 2022. Can I get a motion, please? I, I move to approve the minutes. Thank you. Have a second. I'll second. Thanks, Mike. Uh, any edits? Comments? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Krista. What do you have? Okay. Um, on um, page three, um, the second paragraph from the bottom. That paragraph starts uh, the WBRC, and then it says rep. I think that should say representative, since this is a, a formal document. Okay. Well, and, and you can uh, search for the other reps in the document <laughs> and change them too. And then in the second line, um, some gremlin crept in and um, the word turf is spelled T-E-R-F. Oh, sorry about which, that. <laughs> I am, yeah, which, I'm aware. <laughs> that is not the turf I meant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. <laughs> If you keep going on that same sentence, uh, which creates an funding area for the storm model. Okay, thank you. Any, any other comments? Thank you, Krista. Very good. We have a motion, a second, and some comments. Uh, I think we're ready, Krista. For the approval of the, I'm sorry, of the March planning board minutes, Ashley Case. Abstained. Right. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Ruff. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approved. Dave Thompson. Approved. That's five four. We want abstaining. Very good. Thank you. Next up, uh, we have new business this evening. We have two uh, public hearings. First one is a minor site plan application by Delaney Brownlee. Located at 56 Main Street, tax map 27-2, lot 140 in the Village Commercial District. The application is for a food truck to operate in the existing parking area on the lot. Thank you. Somebody on the application here. 
Uh, could you step up to that mic, please? And just tell, tell us what you uh, just proposed. Hi, everybody. My, my name is Matthew Cunha, and I, uh, I'm here with Delaney Brownlee. We have another person who might be in the Zoom, Gavin Russell, as well. Uh, we're looking to start a food truck uh, right over, right next door at 56 Main Street and the old Cadillac National Bank lot. Uh, me and Delaney and Gavin came up with the idea about a year ago just to have a food truck. Uh, we're planning on serving burgers, fries, kind of fair food, uh, looking to add hot dogs and chicken in the future. And we're also talking about uh, doing milkshakes, so kind of like a, you know, burgers, fries, shapes, that kind of thing, uh, right next door. And again, we have we purchased the food truck, going to get it wrapped, uh, and you know, park it right over uh, next door here with some uh, tables for our customers to to sit at and, and eat. And uh, I mean, that's kind of the basis of what we're looking to do. Thank you. I think, uh, Kyle, you also provided a summary for the planning board as well. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so I'll go over a, a few things that we look at in the ordinance in regards to, to food trucks. Um, so food trucks fall under our mobile food vendor um, designation, which is split into two categories. The reason this one um, is coming before the planning board is the proposal to operate on a more regular, frequent basis. So there's that dividing line of if a food truck is operating you know, more than three days, really. Um, you know, we ask them to come to the planning board and go through the abbreviated site plan process, similar to what we do with home businesses. Um, and it's primarily to look at, you know, where the truck is situated um, on a property. Usually it's in a parking lot, so we're looking at um, traffic and access on the property. Um, in this case, the, the bank is not currently in use, so the parking lot is not being utilized by an existing use on the property. So it's not quite as big of a, a concern. Um, the proposed location that the, um, the applicant uh, has proposed on their plan, sort of in the, those front parking spaces on the, the front property line side, um, I believe the, you know, look at the, the parking area, uh, you know, any day uh, now, um, there are some people parking in there with the, the property owner has um, an agreement with some neighboring businesses and folks to use the, the parking lot. Um, so we want to make sure that the truck is not blocking any access points or um, access in the kind of internal parking area. Uh, where it's proposed, it doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, in addition, there's no minimum parking requirement in the village commercial for businesses. So there isn't really a concern that there might be elsewhere where, you know, the planning board has required a certain amount of off street parking for uh, a use on a site. And then a food truck comes in and takes away a certain number of parking spaces. That's not really a concern here. Um, as uh, I think just mentioned they're um, proposing to have some kind of picnic tables and uh, the trash can located outside of the truck. Um, we talked about it through the, the application that those will be uh, removed from the parking area uh, when the truck's not in operation and will be inside um, the bank. So meeting the, the standards of the ordinance where you're not leaving anything stored outside of the, the food truck um, when it's not in operation. Um, the hours of operation provided uh, meet the standards of the ordinance. Um, the applicant didn't propose any signage as part of their application. Um, the ordinance does allow for a sandwich board sign um, for food trucks. Uh, so in the report, um, staff did make a recommendation that it just be made a condition of approval um, that if they come forward in the future and wish to have a sign, that that's something they could obtain just via a permit through the, the code officer. Um, so it wouldn't have to come back to the planning board um, so long as it met those dimensional requirements in the, in the land use ordinance. Um, other than that, they provided the agreement with the property owner that they um, are allowed to use the property for the use. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So, good picture. Okay. Can you answer any questions? 
Yeah, before we open it up to public hearing, any questions from the, the board or the applicant? Came up with just a couple. Uh, maybe just one. So you mentioned waste is going in the, the, the bank building, but there'll be some regular pickup. Is that your responsibility? Yes. All the stuff, because you said that's what a 60 gallon uh, yes. receptacle inside, and then periodically you have somebody, a waste hauler, come and grab that. Yep, correct. Good answer. Uh, Kyle, I, I did want to procedurally, I did note that you mentioned to uh, simplify this, we need to discuss a waiver. Yes, yeah, I should have uh, yeah. mentioned that part. So, like with the home businesses, um, a number of the the application materials that would normally be required through site plan that have to deal with new construction um, or disturbance on the site, you know, stormwater erosion control, um, those sorts of things. Uh, those aren't usually required for you know, these types of applications where they're not making any actual impact on the, the ground or constructing any new buildings. Um, so there should be a, a motion from the from the board to waive those requirements as they're not really applicable to this project. Um, and I think the I think it's okay to do that in one motion uh, instead of waiving each individually. Yeah, it's a good idea. So I'm just curious. Sorry, but this this is the first one of these the mobile food vendor too. So if this is fairly typical, does that mean we should? consider changing this for all applicants or, or maybe just on occasion somebody will have a site there or a food truck that might affect stormwater or any of the other criteria. I, I mean I'd say it's similar to the, the home business is that yeah. they're coming okay. to the they're coming to the planning board for it's not so much the impact on the ground but for you know whether it's noise or the sort of use of the site and the kind of traffic it might generate in certain areas, certain zones where other commercial activity might not be as present. Um, I mean, the list you have here, I can't see many food trucks that were impacted. Right. You know, that you need topography, soil information, stormwater management. The only thing that might be applicable, parking and traffic circulation. I mean, We've listened to you that, that you're not going to block traffic. It's going to yeah. circulate around. So yeah, I mean, I yeah, something like that could potentially come up in the. Yeah. Not that we get these that often, but it just seems like a food truck. I'm not sure that yeah. we would even have to wait it. We're never. Yeah, I'm not. That. I'm not sure how that would work. It would have to be an amendment to the site plan ordinance. Yeah. I don't know if bigger picture for kind of all projects that fall yeah. into this realm, something to be looked at, but yeah, that's something right. we could look into. From the flag, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's really all I had. Uh, so you understood that the signage requirement? Yeah. It's yeah. fine that you're saying that now, but it, you know, if you want to sign, if we'll just make that, you know, when we get to that stage, uh, yeah. condition of approval so that you have options. Sounds good. Go ahead. Uh, just a general question. Yeah. Kyle, it, it, it doesn't necessarily apply to your application, but food trucks are going to be more common. Does a food truck, because his isn't going to be moving, does it have to be street legal? Does it have to be registered? Yeah, so they have so to. So you have can't trailer it in and just drop it off, right? No, you it has to, to be. It, it yeah, I mean, it can be. It doesn't have to be a, a food truck. A mobile food vendor could be a, a car or a trailer, yeah. but it would need to be towed by something. The idea is that it's mobile. It could be, it could right. Be right. It's not a permanent structure. It's not designed to be dropped off and just left there. If a trailer was you know, to be used, you would imagine that the mobile portion of it would be alongside of it. Uh, One more point. I did notice the site plan application that was submitted does say rezoning application. I just want to make sure there's no no confusion on confusion on that. There, this is not a rezoning application. Right, right. I, I mean you have it right in the public hearing, but 
I just want to make sure that's clear for the atmosphere for that. That's not what we're doing this evening. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that wasn't a town generated. Right. Form. So, uh, yeah. So, I, just as long as there's yeah. no confusion, what, what we're doing. Right. It's only, it's only an application for a site plan. Okay. The only, after the planning board process, um, like any other restaurant or serving food, that then will have to go through the pictures license process through the council. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be a, a yearly license to renew. Uh, but the planning board site plan review is a one time. Right. Kind of yeah, review. but rezoning, that, that's a yep. big deal. This is right. just a site plan. Yep. Lots of, uh, geez, that's all I had. So uh, I'm going to, there's no other questions from the board. All right. Open that up for a public hearing. Bell, are there lines of people waiting? No, one no there's not. Oh. Yeah. Mitch is there. So. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna leave it open for a couple minutes. Uh, so hours of operation, we're gonna kill some time. <laughs> hours of operation, I see you're closed for a couple days and then. Yeah, so we're gonna be closed on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then Friday and Saturday, it's till 10. As long as the audience allows, yeah. um, just because you know it's the weekend, um, college kids are going to be in the area yeah. um, come September. So um, yeah, and then the other hours are pretty standard. I think they're eleven to nine, yeah. um, Wednesday through Wednesday, Thursday, and then um, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Sorry. What kind of lighting do you have on a food truck? Just typical, but just enough so your patrons can. See what's going on. Yeah, there's yeah. just a standard um, yeah. kind of plain light um, above the, the food truck yeah. um, to, to look at. And I think it's there so they can see menus and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's what uh, we have for lights. Right. And you are going to have an electronic menu board? Is that what I saw? Or like TV screen or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. we're looking at kind of just a, a relatively small uh, TV screen yeah. um, that, you know, ho hopefully won't be too bright, but just enough to kind of. Uh, update menus as we see whereas if we had a signage yeah. we'd have to constantly update that we're looking to do like specials a month um, so something um, just a very small tv screen to put there as well as we'll have to take out menus to pass out when would you expect to start you might miss that um yeah so we uh um, we're in the process of getting the state license so we um, submitted our application and we're waiting to hear back from them mm -hmm. and then we'd also have to do the uh, the, the local license that mm -hmm. license here so I mean, we were aiming at May 1st, but it's probably going to be later to the summer, waiting on licenses. Bill, anybody? Nobody. All right, we're going to close the public hearing. Last call for questions from the board. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Kyle, I believe you have some findings of fact yep. for us, proposed findings of fact. I don't Before that, do you want to do the motion for the- Yes, the yeah, thank you. First, yeah, thank you. Uh, we were going to need a motion for the waivers that Kyle described. He has them listed for whoever is going to make the motion. They're listed uh, quite nicely in uh, the review that Kyle provided. So, given that, could I have a motion, please? I move that we waive um, all submission requirements that are relevant only to new construction product projects, including surveys, topographical maps, soil information, stormwater management, erosion control plans, parking and traffic circulation plans, utility plans, and landscaping plans for this particular site plan. Very good. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, can I have a second? Second. Thank you, David. Second. Uh, Further discussion? That's good, please. Yep, for the approval of the waivers, Ashley Case. Approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Ruff. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approved. Dave Thompson. Approved. That's six four none opposed. Thank you. And Lisa, did you get this? Yeah, I ended up with two. All right. All right. Uh, these are proposed findings of fact for Delaney Brownlee for the site plan review dated April 20th, 2022. 
uh, pursuant to Article 6, Section 18-177 of the Orna Code of Ordinances. The Orna Planning Board has considered the application of Delaney Brownlee to a minor site plan for the operation of a mobile, <coughs> excuse me, a mobile food vendor 2 food truck located at 56 Main Street, tax map 27-2, lot 140 in the Village Commercial District, and based on all evidence presented by the applicant reviewing agencies, town departments, and the public found the following. I'm going to go through all, all of these and then we're going to yay or nay at the, at the end, please. Uh, number one, requirements of the district that the proposed use is allowable in the village commercial district and meets all applicable dimensional requirements. Number two, compliance with town ordinances and codes that the proposed use meets the provisions of applicable regulations of the town, including all pertinent sections of chapter 18 land use ordinance. Three, utilization of the site that the use is proposed to take place on an existing parking area and is therefore within the natural capabilities of the site and is located in a suitable area of the site. Four, traffic and pedestrian access that the existing structure on the site is not in use and is not generating any traffic and that the proposed food truck will be accessed via existing roads with adequate capacity to accommodate the proposed traffic generation from the food truck and that the location of the food truck within the parking area will not impact vehicular or pedestrian access on the site. Five, storage of materials, that there will be no exposed storage of materials. Six, stormwater management, that no changes to stormwater management are expected as a result of the project. Seven, erosion control, that no new construction will take place and erosion control me measures will not be needed. Eight, water supply and sewage disposal, that there is no proposed change in water or sewer capacity needed. Nine, utilities, that no change to utilities on the site is required. Ten, natural features, that no change to natural features on the site will occur. Eleven, groundwater and surface water quality protection, that the proposed project does not adversely impact either the quality or quantity of groundwater available to abutting properties or to public water supply systems. 12 hazardous special radioactive materials that the use of the site does not involve the handling, storage, or use of hazardous special or radioactive materials. 13 shoreland relationship that the site is not within the shoreland zone. 14 solid waste management that the proposed use provides for adequate disposal of solid waste. 15 historic and archaeological resources that the project area is not known to contain historic or archaeological resources. 16, financial capacity that the applicant has the financial capacity to carry out the use. And lastly, 17, noise and lighting that the facility will operate within the noise and lighting standards and town ordinances. Are there any uh, issues or concerns with any of those items? I just read them to the record. All right, uh, seeing none, uh, I think I'm ready for a motion. Do you have anything about the signage question right now? Or no? That'll be a condition. So if we go right off uh, Kyle's review. Yeah, so if we. There are two conditions. Yeah, two conditions, one one and two less that is reviewed. And should those get read into the motion? Yeah, please. Go for it. Okay. I propose that we first um, Happy. We'll approve it for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I propose that we approve the uh, site plan review of Delaney and Brownlee for a minor site plan for the operation of a mobile food truck vendor 2 located at 56th Street, tax map 27 2, lot 140 in the Village Commercial District, um, with the following two conditions. Uh, should the property owner give notice that the applicant no longer has the right to use the property to operate a food truck, the applicant, the applicant shall cease operation. Also, if the property is sold, the applicant shall cease operation unless an agreement with the new property owner is reached. And that the applicant is allowed to have one sandwich board sign in relation to the food truck, so long as it meets all relevant requirements of the sign ordinance in section 18-140 of the land use ordinance. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Krista. Uh, any further discussion? 
Jessica, please. For the approval of the site plan application, Ashley Case. Approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Rock. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approved. Dave Thompson. Approved. That's six for approval with none opposed. Congratulations. Very nice to see something going on that walk. Uh, next up, we have another public hearing. This is a proposed land use ordinance amendment to create a definition for fraternity sorority houses slash sorority houses, which would allow fraternity and sorority houses to be used by groups taking part in university-sponsored events when the university is not in session. And Kyle, I believe you prepared a nice summary for us again, if you could go over this. Yeah. But I think the summary is actually longer than the ordinance. <laughs> um, yeah, this is something that we um, staff had, I think, worked on with, uh, with folks from the university um, and then brought to council committee for a discussion. Um, as I kind of tried to explain in the, the report, um, usually when we have a, a land use that zones as a, a use that's allowed in certain zoning districts, there's, a, there's an accompanying definition. Um, so you look at the, the table of uses and you see where it's allowed. And then if you need to you know, more clearly be able to tell what exactly that use entails, you can go to the definition section and you, know, you can see exactly what it is. Um, we have a, a use for fraternity and sorority houses. Um, it's zoned as an allowable use in the university district. Uh, but there's no there's no definition for it in our ordinance. Um, now there's been a, a a practice in the past where some of the uh, fraternity and sorority houses um, wish to be used uh, by certain groups, um, not necessarily related to the fraternity or sorority, but they're um, in the area for some event through the university, um, and you know, the question sort of came up that, okay, this is something that um, ideally we would continue to allow. Um, it's good for a number of reasons. One, you know, these are, these are groups you know, taking part in some sort of university sponsored event. Um, it puts someone in the building to kind of continue maintenance and operation of the building through periods when the fraternities and sororities aren't using them. Um, so it makes maintenance of the buildings a little better. Um, so all around, this was something that uh, I think that the town was supportive of, but the, the potential issue is that if you, if you don't have a definition for it and you just take the, the average dictionary definition of what a fraternity or sorority house is, and you assume that it's to be used by the fraternity or sorority, you know, it brings up the question of, okay, well, when this different group of people is using it, what is it classified as? Um, and it started to raise questions of whether is this, you know, should this be viewed as a different type of lodging facility? Does that raise questions about what sort of codes they now have to meet? Is it a, I, you know, I think through the fire department, they were struggling to under their, their code that they're supposed to follow. So what sorts of requirements that, you know, they should be uh, abiding by. Um, so by defining it this way to include that and provision to, to allow this type of activity under that definition, um, it, it makes it a lot cleaner for staff to be able to continue allowing that use to take place. So that's really the, that's really the goal is to really continue this practice that's been ongoing as an allowable activity going forward. Very good. So yeah, our job this evening, again, when we review ordinances is have a public hearing, uh, provide our recommendation, and then the, the council gets that their public hearing. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, very good. So before I open it up to public hearing, any questions from the board? Okay. <clears throat> well, I, I have one question about this or suggestion. <clears throat> and, you know, on the whole, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> It's I'm, I'm down in the weeds. <laughs> and uh, third line from the bottom of this thing, it says university sponsored events or programs so long as the group serves a common interest. 
And, you know, common interest, okay, what's the common interest? I can think of lots of good common interests, but when you have a bunch of young people, the common interest might be to party, drink lots of beer, smoke pot, whatever. And so I think that we could maybe say after common interest approved by the university so that the university gets to say which com what's the common interest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you're saying, I think that's what we were trying to say when you go kind of a line ahead of that or before that, when it says groups of people taking part in university sponsored events. The idea was that it would be something sanctioned by the university. It's not, it's not just any group um, of people. It's something that the, the university would basically have to sign off on as saying this group is coming here for a, a specific purpose. Um, do, you, do, you still, do you think that's not clear enough or? or... I'm, I'm wondering just to add to that, because I had circled you know, the, a lease is signed. So I was just thinking that every group that would come through there, and I, I just wasn't sure on the terminology, but I'm wondering if with that suggestion and Krista's concern, whether, you know, in that lease, it could be very clear or agreement. I'm not sure I wasn't legally, if that's what it's called at any time, any group goes into the house, but if it, as long as it's specified who's gonna be in there and maybe what the conditions are that would address Krista's concern perhaps. So you have university sponsored events and Krista offered text. I'm just wondering whether it could, the same thought could be captured in the right, lease in the agreement. Actual agreement itself, yeah. Oh. Krista, what do you, what do you think on, on that? What, Or would you still like to see uh, approved by the university? Do you think the lease would take care of it? Yeah, I think we say if we say approved by the university, that takes care of it. No, but I mean, if, would, would, would the lease take care of it? The, the current mention of the lease and university uh, sponsored. Okay, you want to, I'm sorry, where, where, where? No, I, I just wanted to clarify, because when I read that, you, you, you wanted to stress that the common interest be approved by the university. And I was just wondering in the next few words, the comma, a lease is signed. So in that lease agreement, you could be fairly uh, specific on, on what's allowed or, you know, what tenants or, uh, temporary groups are gonna be allowed to do, perhaps? Like, just throwing ideas out. I, I, I guess that I, I'm trying to understand, are we concerned about liability, like who's liable, or are we concerned about what the activities are, or both? Did you hear that, Krista? I didn't quite catch it. Wait, okay. um, I'll speak into the owl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Are you concerned more about liability? In other words, that the university is liable for what happens there or the activities that happen there or both? Well, I guess I was concerned about activities and what some folks might think, you know, this, this is an opportunity where a lot, lot of the you know, we have adult groups coming and, you know, we're not expecting them to go wild. But if we have a group of 17 or 18 year olds um, that, you know, might be connected with a couple of different groups who are at the university, but they all pile into the, want to pile into this housing. Just but it's, it may, maybe it's not necessary. I mean, I, I don't know. I just had the sense that since we haven't really defined the, the, the common interest, <laughs> it, it seems like we could punt to the university to decide whether it's a common interest, an allowable common interest. I'm, I'm just curious on, on how much this board or where, how far can we go on 
I mean, I think you can make a recommendation. Yeah. I, I think what Krista is saying is what we were trying to, yeah. it was the goal of what we were trying to say here is that it's a, the, the group is serving a common interest and that, that common interest is whatever the university sanctioned event is. You know, that's their, yeah. their interest has to be a, something sponsored by the university. Their interest can't just be, well, we're all friends and we like hanging out together. So we're going to go use a fraternity or sorority house. It has to be something directly tied to the university. And that it, you know, it wouldn't even necessarily be five different events going on at the university and one person taking part in each of those events all go into the same, you know, fraternity house. Um, it's, it's, you know, you have a, a specific event happening on campus or through the university in some capacity. Um, you know, there's a group coming to Orono and participating in this event uh, for, you know, whatever duration or, or reason, um, you know, they need a, a lodging facility. And so that group tied to that specific activity would be staying in the fraternity house. So um, I, I think that's what we we're trying to capture. Uh, I mean, if the board wants to make a, a recommendation that the council just kind of look at that, take some of this feedback and make sure that that point has gotten through, uh, I think that's, um, you know, fine. That, that sounds reasonable to me, yeah. Kyle. I, I think, in, in my opinion, uh, your explanation that, that this this would be sufficient as, as is. What, what are other thoughts? Krista brought up the point. What are other, other people think? Lisa? Um, I mean, I, I I kind of agree with Krista that if we add those those words after a common interest, um, that that would underscore that that yep. we're concerned and we want to make sure that the activity is sanctioned by the university and they're liable for what happens. I mean, I live over there, so yeah. It's nice in the summer when there's less noise. It's not a big deal, but it's a deal, right? Something. Yeah, I, I don't mind the clarification. Yeah. Mike? I, I, I would just assume it'd be, I, I know Special Olympics was the dorms and stuff, so it'd be like that. That's right. What the yeah. 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 Uh, other comments? Uh, Ashley, what do you think? Yeah, I was actually unsure about what this use even looked like. So um, I talked to my husband who who um, works with a program that does this. And he said currently um, the way it works for his, the program that he's associated with, I think it's REU, um, the students can come in, they can stay there, they can eat there, but they can't like ha host an event in that space right now. So if there's an REU event that they're doing, they can't host it there, but that's where they're all like staying anyways. So I think I think it seems like that's what they're, we're kind of, kind of trying to do is to have like those types of events for, you know, groups that are already sanctioned to be there. That's kind of how I understood it. Okay. Do you think a uh, modification, what are your thoughts on, on adding a, a little qualifier there? What do you yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I think I would move it up. Um, where, where were we talking? University sponsored events approved by the university, right? So I would put it kind of in that clause towards the beginning. So it's like very clear and that, that language, you know, is kind of lumped in together. I think so that there's a couple of things here and I'll, I'll continue around to ask Dave, but Again, I, I'm wondering whether we can emphasize that we we our concerns here, and maybe make a suggestion of location, and then leave it to council to to, to figure out where it goes. But I, I've heard enough uh, chatter here, and Dave, I, what are your thoughts on, on this as well, Mr. Thompson? I think you uh, agree with Questioner that. Uh, Putting those few words at the end of it will it, it doesn't do any harm and it certainly no, I agree. Yeah. Good, good call. Uh, so I mean I think we're all in agreement here that uh, we can add add a qualifier uh, where it goes. So Kyle, I'm not quite sure if we need to 
nail that down today. One way or another, we, we'd like it to be captured that it's, I mean, it's very clear you know, the university approved. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I think okay. have enough to take back to council. Does that cover everybody? Uh, additional comments? I don't have any. This is one of the easier ordinance amendments. I think we'll we'll see. But uh, all right. Uh, I, I guess hearing no no further comments, I I gotta open this up to public hearing. Don't I? Hey, hey, Bell. Anybody on the line that wants to speak? Public hearing is open. Nobody. Nobody. That is so surprising. Uh, and yeah, no interest throughout that the whole discussion. No, nope. sorry. No. Nope. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not going to wait. Going once, twice, gone. Public hearing is closed. Uh, can I have a motion? I think we're ready for that. Do we need to vote on this or is it just go back to council? Uh, do, do we just pass that one? I thought we need to. This is a public hearing. I think. What do we need for a decision? Yeah, I mean, there can be a motion that it's recommended back to council with the the recommended yeah. clarification in the language. Um, just in case it, yeah. Yeah. Right. Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Uh, not sure how, how we can approach this. Uh, I just, you know, I, I would say uh, approve the amendment land use ordinance in regards to fraternity sorority houses as identified in the town's land use ordinance in the Malabo uh, University District with the recommendation of the wording to specify that it's a university sponsored and approved events only. I think that works. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah. I'll second. Very good. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, Jessica, please. To recommend the um, ordinance amendment to council, Ashley Case. Approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Ross. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approved. Dave Thompson. Last but not least, I approve. <laughs> Six for approval, none opposed. Very good. Uh, next up is discussion before we get to uh, the first item. Ashley, I, I think we've been remiss all this time. You missed a couple meetings. I believe I heard your child in the background, but uh, how, how's the baby doing? He's great. Um, he just turned five months old. Yep. We haven't really asked. We missed you for a little while, but he I mean, was. He made an appearance when, um, I think before you had showed up for like just a few minutes, he was kind of like wiggling around. Oh, he, I think he's coming to say hello, because yes. there we go. There he is, he's in a good mood. <laughs> hey, but, and, and his name? Uh, Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. Nice to have you on board. Ooh. He could have provided comment. <laughs> he usually <Hello>. does. <laughs> Uh, well, very good. Now that now that we have that out of the way, nice, nice to meet you, Benjamin. Uh, next up, uh, our, our favorite time of the year, electing a planning board chairperson and vice chairperson uh, for a one-year term. Kyle? Yeah, so uh, our April meeting is, is when we do this. Um, the planning board is certainly open to uh, discuss uh, or make recommendations as far as uh, who they um, think or who they'd like to um, see as chair and vice chair. Um, Bill has been the, the chair for the past year and Judd has been the vice chair. Judd's not here um, this evening, so it's a great opportunity to <laughs> force him to do it for another year. Um, but, but really, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there should be a a motion to uh, uh, approve uh, a chair for the following year. Um, and I think if if the board uh, recommends that, that Judd continue in the vice chair position, I think we could do that on a conditional basis, conditioned on the next planning board meeting we have 
him actually agreeing to that. Um, so um, with that, I, I mean, I'd open it up to the, to the board for any comments or recommendations as far as people who would be interested or, or recommendations on who they think uh, should continue. I, I have a recommendation uh, for Phil to be appointed the chair. I've been on the board for almost 20 years and I, he really does a good job in my estimation. So uh, I wholly recommend him and, and commend him for his service to the town. Thank you, Dave. And I second I, I, that. <laughs> thank you. I, I have done this for a while, but by, by no means is this locked in. Uh, I, I do not mind doing it, but if, uh, by all means, if anybody else has an interest, Jump on board. <laughs> and I move, assuming assuming John is okay with it, give me the vice chair. I'll second that. That was easy. Okay. Well, thank you for your uh, confidence. I, I do appreciate that. Um, there should be a, a vote, I guess, to just approve that. All right. Uh, can I get a, a motion, please? Can we do a vote? Same time. I move that we have uh, Phil Rock be the chair of the committee and Judd McIntyre. McIntosh. Sorry, be the vice chair. Mm -hmm. I'll second. I second. Thank you. Lisa's got it. Uh, further discussion? Jessica? For the approval of the chair and vice chair, Ashley Case. Approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Buck. Approved. Phil Ruck. Approved. Should he have? Am I yeah, allowed to ask Phil? Uh, approved. 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 Okay. <laughs> Krista Schwinzer. Approved. Dave Thompson. Approved. That's six, four, none opposed. Uh, one last thing before adjournment. What's the status of the, and maybe this is a question for Bell, Zoom room? I know we've been doing this for a while and with the OWL uh, reminders, but what, what's the status of the, the town's improvements? So the um, contract has been signed, but we're just waiting on the supply chain to deliver all the equipment. What, do you have any idea on an ETA? Not a clue. Yeah, that's typical. Uh, I mean, at every every service like that, it's just hard to come back. I do oh, have one other thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. What, what do we have on tap? Too? Uh, yeah. Well, two more things. Um, so first, uh, I'll just uh, bring this up. Um, the uh, Bangor has reached out. So um, if you don't know, Bangor and Orono have been working together um, and the university, I believe, uh, on developing a, a climate action plan. Um, I think Bangor is having a few representatives speak to their planning board at their May 3rd meeting at 7 p.m. And they're going to have a sort of educational conversation um, about the relationship between climate action planning um, and zoning and land use planning. Um, so, you know, the planning board, um, you know, it's one of its major functions is to, is to look at zoning and land use planning. Um, and as climate planning becomes more prevalent and more of a thing focused on, um, it, it could be a worthwhile opportunity for um, board members to, to kind of take part in and, and learn more about. So um, Bangor has invited um, the Orono Planning Board to take part in that meeting if they uh, wish. So um, I believe you're welcome to attend in person. Um, or remotely through Zoom. And I think also, uh, hopefully there'll be a, a recording of it that I can share afterwards for anyone who, who can attend. Um, but in the next week or two, I can send out more information to Zoom link um, once it's provided. So if anyone's interested in going. Um, uh, yeah. And then as far as what's coming up, uh, we have one site plan application that's come in for the May meeting. It's for a, uh, a new construction uh, along Godfrey Drive, just south of the SRV building. 
um, on that on that lot there, um, sort of just after you get past the, the bend in the road. Um, it's for a, a 5,000 square foot building to be used as a, um, a hydroponic grow facility, primarily for marijuana cultivation, uh, I believe. Um, so yeah, we'll be looking at that next month. Um, <clears throat> the council, um, and I, I think everyone's probably aware, um, Tyler Technologies purchased the, the University Inn lot um, you know, over there. And you know, we've met with council committee a few times about working on a, a contract zone as that property is identified in the comp plan as being right for, for contract zoning um, to allow for a, a continued use there. Um, so in the next couple of months, uh, that project will be coming to the planning board as well, um, but probably not next month. So, yeah. Those are the bigger things. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I, I do want to be clear. I know we, we've talked about uh, attendance uh, procedures, and I know Kyle uh, laid out for us how we can do remote versus in person. And I know I've had conversations with some of you, but I, I do want to stress, or I, I would like us to be more diligent about uh, just making sure we know uh, if you're going to participate in meetings and and if so, if you're going to be remote, uh, that is the, the town policy. Uh, I know this is a, a large volunteer commitment for, for everyone, but it is important that we know if you cannot attend, uh, that you do provide notice or respond to Kyle or, or Jessica when those emails go out. So again, we, we appreciate your time, but uh, I believe Kyle requested, and I'm not sure if you got any of the emails, but uh, Krista and I had had a conversation a while back that, that Kyle was included that we understood that, that uh, for specific reasons, she was gonna be participating remotely for the foreseeable future. But just I just wanna be clear so we know uh, where you're gonna be and if you cannot attend, that that, that would be helpful if you, if you let us know, uh, but we, we'd like to, uh, Again, be be more consistent with that if you would. That's all I have. Uh, last up is adjournment. Can I have a, a motion? So moved. Thank you. <laughs> have a second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Jessica, you're up again. For adjournment of the April meeting, Ashley Case. Approved. Michael Costello. Approved. Lisa Bach. Approved. Phil Rock. Approved. Krista Schwenzer. Approve. Dave Thompson. Thumbs up, Dave. Can I get a thumbs up? Approve. I said it once. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Couldn't, couldn't hear you. <laughs> Six for adjournment, none opposed. Thanks. Everybody have a good evening. We'll, we'll see you in May. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs>